Welcome to our next art lesson. Uh, the materials that you have left over, the paper materials you have left over in your art packet are these five pieces right here. You have a big white, a big black, a small white, a small black, and then a teeny tiny green. For this first part, this very first video of this lesson, there are gonna be two videos. All you need is the white paper. So take those other four pieces of construction paper you were given and grab your paper clip, paper clip them back together and put it aside for video number two. So the other materials you are going to need are going to be your paper plate, your paintbrush. Some of you received this paintbrush, some of you received the, the long paintbrush that was in the, um, the last paint lesson. So I, I'm going to use this paintbrush this time. You need a pencil, possibly an eraser, and you need the yellow and red paint that was left over. You do not need the blue paint anymore. So just the yellow and the red paint. So go grab those materials and come on back. All right, and the other thing you need is an adult. You need an adult to sit with you for this lesson. So if you do not have an adult with you, I want you to go grab an, the adult in your house right now and say, hey, can you come and sit with me for about 10, maybe 15 minutes, maybe even shorter. I'm not sure. Not very long though. You just need them for about Tell them 10 or 15 minutes and then grab that adult and come on back. All right, I'm gonna show you Zach's workstation. He's all ready to go. Wanna say hi, Zach? Hi. Here's his workstation. And we are gonna start with our paper plate. And this is where the adult really needs to um, be active and helping here. The adult is gonna grab the yellow paint container and you are going to pour a little bit of yellow on one side of your paper plate. Oh, I forgot to mention that you need water and a paper towel. So, yeah. Water and paper towel. Go grab those if you don't have them. <laughs> Alright, so yellow on one side of your paper plate. and red on the other side of your paper plate. But with the red, you just need a little bit, just a tiny bit. Maybe like that much, mm. okay? Oh well, yeah, because we're mixing them, right? We're gonna mix. Okay, so I'm gonna come on over to Zach. I'm gonna pour his yellow. And you should have had plenty left over from the other lesson in order to do this one. And then I'm going to grab his red. I'm going to pour just a little bit of red on his. All right. And we might need to pour more, but we're going to just start with that. Now what I want you to do is I want you to put your paper plate off to the side. And grab your white piece of paper. Go ahead and grab your white paper, Zach. Yeah. You got this it? One? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm now going to show you. Uh, is it supposed to be black? Because... We're gonna do a white paper for this part. Should I show them what we're gonna do? Yeah. I should show them. Okay, we are gonna make a jack-o'-lantern. So today what we're gonna do is we are going to paint the pumpkin. We are gonna use yellow and red to create what color? Orange. Orange. And we're going to paint, do the painting part. The next part of the lesson, video number two, is going to be um, creating the actual jack-o'-lantern. So all you need today is your w big white piece of paper, okay? So we are about to get started and I'm gonna give you your reminders that I always give us about how, what we wanna keep in mind when we are going to be doing our art lessons. Number one, always try your best. Number two, if you get frustrated, take a deep breath, count to 10, Take another deep breath and try again. Number three, everyone's art will turn out differently. Your artwork is gonna be uniquely yours. So is your pumpkin gonna look like mine, Zach? Nope. No, my pumpkin's not gonna look like yours or anyone else in the class. And number four, art is not perfect. And then 
Zach's sister Sarah added a fifth one. She said a yes. rule should be. It's always have fun. Always have fun. All right. Okay. So we're gonna keep those things in mind. We're gonna get our pencil out. You got your pencil, Zach? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Grab your pencil. And if you need an eraser handy, have an eraser handy. You and I are gonna just share one. So right now we're going to use this whole big area and we are going to draw lightly the shape of our pumpkin that we want, okay? So what I want you to really focus on is using the whole paper. But are we gonna cut this out? After the paint's dry, yeah. Today we're just drawing the pumpkin and painting But if you it. wanna make a new one, you can, right? If you wanna make another one, then you'd have to have another piece of white paper. Well, don't they have to like, if they want to draw something, like at their house. They would use their own paper for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the orientation that I want your paper to be is called portrait. That means it's running up and down like this. When you have it sideways like this, this is called landscape. So I want you to have it facing portrait. Say that for me, Zach. Portrait. Portrait, okay? Make sure yours is facing portrait. Adult. The adult who is sitting with you, can you please make sure that your child's paper is facing portrait? Awesome. Now we're going to use the whole well, paper um, to create. This might actually make, this might actually take like only like two minutes because it's just mis mixing color and cutting paper out and then finding the color on the paper. Yeah, this is a pretty quick lesson. Okay, we're going to do the bottom part of our pumpkin. And if you look here, pumpkins usual, usually on the bottom, they're a little bit bigger, okay? So I'm gonna start by just doing kind of like a half of an oval, like an open oval like this. Oops, see this is why I need my eraser. I went off my, my stand, okay? Remember, look, look at how I'm using my whole paper. Sorry, I'm gonna erase that part. I'm going really close to the edge. I'm coming down here. And then I'm coming really close to the edge up here. Okay, so this is kind of like the bottom part of my pumpkin. And pumpkins are kind of like, they're not, they're, they're not like perfectly rounded or perfectly oval. They have different ways that they grow depending on how they're growing in the pumpkin patch, right? Yeah, like some are like humongous, some are big, some are small, some are medium. Mm-hmm, and some of them have big, big bottoms and then they narrow out going up. Some of them are just really big and circular all the way around. So now that you have your base, now I want you to decide how your pumpkin's gonna go. Is it just gonna keep going up and be just be a big, big circle? Or is it gonna come up and get narrow and come in and be like more of an oval? Okay. I want you to choose how your pumpkin, the rest of your pumpkin's body is going to be. I'll just see how um, one of them is, and then if I like it, I keep it, and if I don't like it, I erase it and do the other. That's a great strategy. And look, Zach, we're going to come all the way up and use a l most of the paper, okay? So we're going to do a big pumpkin. So I'm just going to kind of come up, and my pumpkin's going to kind of go like this and like that. It's not perfect. This is just the shape that I chose for my pumpkin. Now what I'm gonna do is take my eraser and see how I have a line inside right here. If you have any lines inside your pumpkin, I want you to erase the lines inside your pumpkin. Do you need an eraser? Looks like you were looking for an eraser. Do you see how this line right here is kind of curved and not, not perfectly straight or perfectly um, rounded. I'm just making mine a little bit more round. Okay. So Zach is just wrapping up the drawing of his pumpkin. You're probably wrapping up the drawing of yours. I want you to look at your pumpkin and ask yourself if you used a lot of the paper. Because we need to make sure we have enough space to create our jack-o'-lantern face using the other construction paper right all right but I also want to make sure that I didn't go off my paper here and I didn't go off my paper on the sides and I didn't go off my paper up top 
And in fact, because I want to make sure that this pumpkin... Mom, hmm. you should have told them that to make this... Well, I'm going to erase some of it because it's really big and it has to fit on a black piece of paper, right? So Zach is saying that it has to fit on this black piece of paper, right? So if you put your black piece of paper right side by side with your white piece of paper, you notice that they're the exact same size, right? So they're going to be able, even if your pumpkin's really big, once you cut it out, it's going to fit on your black piece of paper as long as you didn't go all the way to the edges. So you choose, and then once you're done erasing and, and uh, you have it exactly the way you want, the size you want, now we're going to get to the color mixing and the painting. Okay, now I want you to grab your paper plate. Yeah, this is a perfect size because it could go like, dun, 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 like this then. Okay, grab your paper plate with your paint, grab your paintbrush, put it off to the side. These I'm are gonna, tiny paintbrushes. Yeah, some of our friends got this paintbrush and some of them got the one that we used the first time we painted, so I thought we'd use oh. this one this time so they could see. So here's Zach, he's ready to go. You ready, Zach? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Tell me, Zach, which one is lighter? Yellow, Yellow or red? Yellow's lighter. So what I can do is I can actually just leave my big glob of yellow right there. Remember, we take a lot of the light color and then we take a little bit of the darker color. So leave your big glob of yellow there and put your paintbrush in your red and just take a little scoop of it and start mixing until you get the color orange that you like for your pumpkin. If you need more yellow, you could just get another um, yellow, like like another, like if you have an extra paint thing, then you could get that and then put pour some more yellow. Yeah, but if you- But I got a great yellow. Yeah, if you need more so yellow, ask the adult orange. to help you pour the ye yellow, and then keep mixing okay. until you get the orange that you want. We kind of got the, like the same orange. Our oranges are really similar. Okay, keep mixing because you have some more yellow right here. Mix the whole thing. Yeah, there you go. So mix, mix, mix. And once you have... Mom, look. It's like this is earth and then this is the cute size. Oh yeah, totally the size of it, yeah. Okay, let's say, Zach, that my orange is too yellow. It's really, really light. What do I need to add to make it a little darker? Red. Okay, so add a little bit more red if you feel like your orange is too light. What if your orange, Zach, is too dark and it looks really red? You add more yellow. Then you add more yellow. So well, if you are, like, if you use all the yellow, yellow for the orange, then if you have an extra, like, yellow, like, paint. Then you pour, pour it, you can pour it on top. Now, once you have it all mixed, I want you to start painting in your pumpkin. Now, it's okay if you go out of the line. In fact, I kind of want you to go a little bit out of the line. Yeah, because we're going to cut it out. Anyway. We are going to cut it out. So go ahead and start we painting. We are going to cut it out today. Do you think it would be a good idea to cut it when it's wet or when it's dry? When it's dry. So we're going to have to wait for it to dry to, before we cut it out. Yeah. Okay, look at how I'm going way out. Look, I'm totally out of my lines, right? And I want to be out of my lines so that when I cut, I, my whole pumpkin is for sure painted. And you can paint it however you want. I started at the top. Zach, he started at the okay. side. If, it's okay if you don't want to go out the lines. Well, I'd like you to go a little bit out of the lines, actually. So when that you when you do cut it next time, you for sure have the paint all over the pumpkin. So please go a little bit out of the line. Do you see how I'm out of my lines? Because next time we're not going to be using paint. We're almost done. This is quick, right? Well, I wait. Is this two minutes? Two minutes that we've been painting? Maybe we haven't been painting for very long. Maybe two minutes. All right. I'm almost done. If you need to mix more paint, mix more paint. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that is.
so good. Oh, that's a, such a nice compliment. And Thank that's you. a great orange. Thank you. What a sweet compliment. I want to see yours. Oh, yours is looking really beautiful. What a beautiful color you mixed. All right, Zach's wrapping his up. I'm all done with mine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry overnight. And then the next time you watch, when you watch the next video, we're gonna create, we're gonna cut it out. And then we're gonna create all the different shapes for our jack-o'-lantern face and our stem and glue it all onto our black piece of paper. And we'll be all done with our art lesson. Well, if you get out of the lines, then and you cut, I mean, you cut out of the lines and then you didn't want to because it's not orange, then you could just paint the orange and then do the rest the next day. Well, we're not going to be using paint after this. So right now I want you to paint as yeah, much as you're going to paint. If, like, if, like, no, because I thought, like, if someone else would do it, like, Okay. All right. So, are you ready to say goodbye, Zach? Yeah. Okay. Bye.